Hi, I'm James. And I'm Don. And uh, we're, we're the Gilbies. The Gilbies. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> He's like a rock and roll British bachelor who moved to Georgia and got a white picket fence and had a baby. <laughs> it's like I'm in a witness protection program. <laughs> this is our renovation story. So we were looking for a house um, in February of 2020, and our realtor, who was amazing, had taken us to seven or eight houses in the Atlanta area, and they were none that just spoke to us. There were a lot of new construction or just homes that didn't have a lot of character. I felt like that we just didn't see us living in. Um, so we kind of felt like it was a bust. And then <laughs> one night uh, before the world shut down, we were out at a bar, and this is pre-baby. I get a text message, it's Friday night, from our realtor and says, I have the house for you. It's not on the market. Um, you have to come see it tomorrow. So <laughs> we roll out of bed <laughs> on Saturday morning to a neighborhood called Kirkwood um, that we've never heard of before, walk into the home. Um, and, and we made an offer before we'd seen the whole house. Yeah. We loved it that much. When we first saw the house, um, it was bright blue. With a lime green door. <laughs> there were trees in the front of the house that made it a little darker. Mm. The fence was falling apart. The exterior was interesting. It needed some work. It needed work. And there were sort of some twee aspects to it. And they'd done a great job in sort of making it yeah. you know, look nice. But it was one of those where once you scratch the surface, you knew you had work to do. What appealed to us inside was First off, the house was built in 1911, and I think just having that history was really important to us. There was so much character, but the issue was it was so dark, and the cased openings were so low, and the fireplace was super dated, and the floors were yellow. So while it had some of that charm, some of that charm had been stripped away over the years. I mean, this house has been through so many iterations. So I think we really wanted to just bring back the charm that we could see that it could have, um, and just give it a new life while still honoring the fact that it was built in 1911. Some houses have good bones, yeah. and this house has great bones. So I started my career um, in set design in the art director world, um, and then pivoted to owning my own company and my own design firm. And I knew that I could get my carpenters and contractors in quickly to transform it. So our first objective with, it, with this house was just to make it look brighter, cleaner, more welcoming, and just updated. The first thing we did when we move in, because Dawn insists upon it, is painting. <laughs> painting, painting, painting. We've always liked a white house. We both love white houses. This is a beautiful craftsman home built in 1911. And so we wanted to honor its southern roots. Bringing in a porch swing and the fans, like all of that just made it so much more inviting. Like it had such a, a lack of function. And now, I mean, we're out here almost every day. The revelation for me, I think, was how important an exterior is. Mm -hmm. That you you do, you every time you arrive home or every time you look at your house, it gives you a good feeling before you step yeah. through the door. And I, I, I didn't realize how important that was. Yeah. So when we first bought the house, there was an archway here. It just wasn't very functional anymore. It was breaking apart. But I still wanted to have that character and charm honoring the home's architectural background and era. White picket fence, American dream, baby, says the Brit. You really do. You have the, you have the American dream. I truly really do. <laughs> He's like a rock and roll British bachelor who moved to Georgia and got a white picket fence and had a baby. <laughs> it's like I'm in a witness protection program. <laughs> a beautiful a really, witness really pretty, protection yes, program. Yeah, that's yeah. A+. Plus. So this is the living room. Changing out the door, I think, transformed this space. It was low and solid, so there was no light coming in. And I think adding in the door package, it allows for so much light to come in. I love when the light streams in in the afternoon. It's probably the happiest moments are in the afternoon here. Being an interior design moron, I never realized that merely by making a door bigger, actually making the doorway itself bigger, you bring so much more light and airiness into a room. My whole thing is that I want people to come into my home and feel welcome and at ease and happy. The ceiling height was not accentuated at all. The passageways in the home um, were really low and they were all squared off given the ceiling height is so high and it's so beautiful. So one of my first priorities was to open up our cased openings and I wanted to bring back in that charm from the 1911 home that it was. Um, you'll see a lot of arches throughout. Uh, it's kind of our thing. 
So the fireplace was a brick fireplace with multiple different colors of grout. By bringing um, the fireplace all the way up and opening up this cased opening, we're really accentuating how tall these ceilings are. And I mean, they're so tall and so beautiful. There was a lot of inspiration from Spanish style architecture in that regard. And I just loved how simple and clean it was and still just like super cozy. This room is actually not that big of a space. There's room for a sofa and a coffee table in here. It really does open up and make it feel like a huge space. Let's take you to the office to show you um, that we did play around with different colors. We didn't just do a white, bright, airy. We wanted to, I wanted to bring in some of James's British masculine moody vibes. So this is quite a departure uh, from this space, but we'll take you to the office. So this is James's office. This space was completely different when we moved in. It was really important for us to transform this space pretty quickly as you were working from home. And I wanted it to feel like his sanctuary because his entire life had just changed, his working life. Um, you know, being in the corporate world for so long, like he wasn't going to the office nine to five anymore. This was kind of his spot. This was formerly the nursery. The floors were super yellow. There was no, you know, window treatments or anything that kind of made this room feel special. So these built-ins uh, we put in, James has a lot of things. So adding in these custom, you know, filing cabinets for him and drawers that are charged up so he can charge his various, <laughs> um, gadgets. you know, gadgets. Um, but really just making this beautiful, but also a place that's functional for you. His built-ins have certain details that we wanted to make feel special in the space. And I worked with my carpenter, Patty Collins, to bring in this walnut. And he also did some laser cutting onto the walnut to make a really cool custom design for James, which was actually a surprise to me and we loved it. The walnut inlay in the drawers, it's just so beautiful. And the doors here, like it's just an added layer of detail and design that really just makes this space special. I did get to choose one thing. I got to choose the hardware. Oh, you did, you did. I did. did yeah. Gold hardware. Brits brass. <laughs> my office feels like my own sanctuary, and I, I love it every time I go in there. It, it was very much a, a reveal. You know, she sort of gave me a sense of what was going to happen, but after they'd finished, it was really like having my, my, my own little Idaho. It, it, <laughs> it, it really was. It was incredible. I don't think ever in my life I've ever had a dream space. You know, I've, I've lived in places and I've vaguely decorated places, but never one where I've walked in and gone, oh my goodness, this is mine and it's home and, and, uh, and I get to live in this space. So it, it really, I was overwhelmed by it. Leaving this space, we'll go into a brighter space. Uh, we'll take you to Catherine's nursery next, which is very different than this space. So this space is Catherine's nursery and I've had this space designed before, you know, we even knew that we were having a girl. When we bought this house, I remember saying to him the first day that we got the keys, March 20th, um, we were outside and I said, this is where we are going to bring our baby home to, um, which makes me cry because <laughs> we did. Um, so we had, we would sit on the sofa and from the sofa in the living room, you can see Catherine's room, our daughter. And um, I remember looking at that room thinking someone should be in that room. I remember it, I was, probably on a set and uh, had some downtime and I saw this wallpaper and I just designed her entire nursery around it. And luckily the, the wallpaper did come in a different colorway. It came in blue, if we did have a boy. I have a feeling she's been planning that nursery for 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> so this space was a playroom. So it was pretty much a blank space. So it was white walls, the yellow floors and lower doorways as well. So we really wanted to make this space, you know, feel like Catherine's special, beautiful nursery. So instead of removing the board and batten, we put wallpaper above. Um, and I think it just adds like that just gorgeous layer. Obviously the wallpaper is very important to me, but it just added so much to this room. And then opening up the doorways, again, brings more light and makes a small room feel a lot bigger. There's just so many touches in that room to me. I, that's the most special room, special room in the house because we have James's mother, who Catherine is named after. She is directly looking down over the crib um, of Catherine, and it's just so important to us. Um, and we kind of symbolize butterflies with his mom. So there's a lot of butterflies in there, which makes it super special and important. So that room, I think, is just both of our favorite places, place it. to be. 
So this is the basement slash Catherine's playroom, bunk room. My movie room. So this space when we moved in was so stinky. Stinky. It smelled like a basement. It, it was a place you didn't want to be in. It always felt like a waste of space. Here we had this whole area and it was just used to dump stuff. So the first step was to lighten and brighten everything. So putting in new floors, new carpet, painting everything white, adding a really gorgeous wallpaper to the ceiling. Just these little details that make it feel not like a basement. And it really has just come to life. And I think, obviously she won't sleep down there for a couple of years, but she loves to play in the little bed. And, and of course she loves the surround sound stereo that <laughs> I've put in down there as well that she asked for. <laughs> We added in this bookshelf as well. If you open this, there's a door to access our crawl space. It makes it safe for the kids because they're not going to mess with it when they're down here. They're just going to see all these lovely toys we've provided for them. <laughs> so our basement renovation was completed yesterday. Yesterday. <laughs> um, nothing like filming to get things going. As a designer, it is a lot more difficult to renovate your own home. Um, I think at the end of the day, you kind of have design fatigue. Uh, you also know every single option available to you. So you're like, what if I make the wrong choice? The sky is the limit in design, which is the coolest part about it, budget willing. Um, but I do think at the end of the day, I'm like, oh, I guess I'll just pick that light. Like I'm so tired, I've picked nine lights today. <laughs> so I do, but it also, it is my home and I do love it so much. So I think I try to really give myself time to design our home. Um, and homes can't be built in a day. You know, I tell my clients this all the time, like. We're in year three and we're still doing renovations. There are still things that I want to do and there are still furniture items and art I want places. It takes time. I think I've learned that it's okay to change things. Yeah. I think there is a sense, you know, again, budget willing, but I think there is a sense that just because you've done it, that's the next 10 years. Yeah. And I think to remove that fear and say, hey, that wallpaper doesn't work. We can try another one budget willing, learning that, that making mistakes or yep. just tweaking things is probably a good idea. Our renovation is ongoing um, and will always be ongoing. I think there's always going to be things that we want to change or make better. You know, renovations typically take six to eight weeks on total. So, you know, we like to, to do a major renovation, go down for a little bit and then come back. Uh <laughs> design begets design. <laughs> Do you know what I mean by that? Design begets design. What do you mean? I mean by that as in we've designed one room and now we're going, oh, shall yeah. we do the kitchen now? We are going to do the kitchen next. Are we going to do the patio? <laughs> shall we do this next? It sort of, it spreads like a disease across the house. <laughs> oh my God. A beautiful disease. A good disease. A, a lovely <laughs> disease. So as this is my industry, um, I thought going into it that I wouldn't have any surprises. But of course you do. And you learn so much doing your own home renovation. And I actually think every interior designer should go through a home renovation so they can better serve their clients. Because I know what it feels like to be pregnant and feel emotional when you want to have a fireplace on Christmas and instead you're sitting next to Tyvek. <laughs> you know, I can so sympathize and have so much empathy with my clients. And I think that's probably the biggest learning experience is I know what it feels like. I can help you through this um, because it is not easy. Dealing with people's homes and money, the things that we work our lives for, like aside from our children, you know, what else is, you know, more precious to us and that like, it's just, it is a huge undertaking. There is no easy renovation. There is no, um, you know, ripping your, you're gonna rip your house apart and that is hard and it takes 10 times longer than you think. It's gonna cost more money than you think. You know, it's, it's a process, but is it worth it a thousand percent? Would I do this all again? Probably yes. yes. <laughs> of course I would do it all again. It's, you know, you, you don't just do it for aesthetic reasons, you do it for very practical reasons as well. You know, we were having a kid and we wanted a, a beautiful home for her. But um, do I enjoy it while it's happening? Not so much. But do I enjoy the results? Hell yeah.